this game uh, I never really got too big into it but it became free on PlayStation so I thought why not don't forget some things must be forgotten the shadow hunting me I must hurry my name is Daniel I live in London at, at uh, Mayfair what have I done this is crazy. Don't forget. Don't forget. I must stop him. Focus. My name is... Yes. I am Daniel. Okay. The name of this level is Rainy Hall, and it's supposed to be a combination of atmosphere setter and tutorial for the player. We wanted the player to start the game in a slow way so they could settle in and get used to how the game works. Amnesia is not a game with constant action happening all the time, and we wanted to have a constrained map where the player gets used to this. The only thing you need to do is to follow the track and get to the end of the level. Also. Following tracks is something that becomes very useful in later levels, so we try to teach players this from the start.
This is one of the first levels that we created for the game, and it was initially part of the archives level, which we will reach in a bit. And we just started out with a pretty different design, and when we redesigned that the maps did not fit, this caused us to split them up and scatter them out. So in the first design, after this corridor, the archives level was supposed to follow, and the room lying there now was built much later. In fact, the first designs did not have Daniel waking up with an amnesia at all, and it was actually added later on. But in the first the story draft, Daniel still had hidden memories, but he was unaware of this at the start of the story. However, as we redesigned things, we found the waking up with amnesia thingy, although a bit cliche, much more fitting. Again, it's pretty much forced to speak English at our internal meeting, as I am the only non Swede here. Now, what a Spaniard is doing with a bunch of Swedish the guys. The editors themselves went through a lot of design changes during the development. Not that many in visual appeal as in internal stuff, like data structures and handling. This happened mostly because at the beginning we only knew the basic stuff that needed to be in them. And as they grew in features and functionality, they started to kind of fall apart, mostly due to my big lack of previous experience in projects like this. Right now, I loud what the hell still sounds in my head when I look at some parts of the code, but I am still proud of them. We can also get a bit buggy of time, but hopefully this won't happen again in the future, and I already got some nice ideas for the next iteration of the tool. My name is Mikael, and I'm the writer for Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Like God willing, the name Alex. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both, Daniel. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. Damn, Daniel! I think we can all feel the story kick starting as we finish the letter from Daniel. The game itself is just filled with confusion, and I think we are really doing the player a service keeping it simple in the beginning. Basically try to take your revenge on Alexander, that is the premise of the game. You don't really need to dive any deeper than that, but hoping that the player will care about the story, they have the entire game in front of them to decide if they think killing Alexander is justified or not. Hello, my name is Martin Kendall. I'm a 3D artist and level creator at Fictional Games. I started out as a helper during Penumbra Overture, and I was finally hired as a full-time artist in the later part of Penumbra Black Plague. Don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... what did you call it? The Inner Sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel. And it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenburg. Ah, 
The entrance hall was first shown in our first gameplay trailer, and while the layout hasn't changed much, the details certainly have. We build our levels from sets of pieces, in this case, the custom base set. While the carefully planned set pieces made level building very easy, the levels became very similar and we had to make special pieces to the level. Now, one and a half year later, the special pieces make up about half of the pieces in the custom base set, and we made changes to incorporate these objects into the earlier levels. An example of this can be seen if you compare the hole in the roof now with the one from the first trailer. The new roof was made in the middle of the project when you built level 9 back hall. A special version was made to give the roof hole in the entrance hall more depth and detail. Scattered throughout the game you can see some signs written in Latin. The reason for using it is that it was considered a language of culture and science. As most scientific and philosophy authors wrote their work and treatises in it. As we are dealing with a castle dwelt by a pretty smart guy that has been around since the Renaissance period, Latin all around the place was something we should expect. Being the only guy in the team that had a direct contact with Latin in high school to be more precise, well it was kind of logical that any translation to be done would have my name on it. Translating stuff into Latin was kind of strange and fantastic to do. At first I had a classic Latin dictionary. So if I had to translate any modern term, I would have to track its etymology down to the Latin equivalent, or look for a synonym or similar expression that had a direct translation. Then I have if the you line. haven't followed our development blog back when it started, you might have missed one of the biggest changes in our production pipeline. Two years back, we started a toolset side project to ease and speed up the creation of content for the game. I'd say the level editor, which is what we, or more specifically James, Mark and Marcus have used to build all the halls and corridors you are working through right now. It's the big start of the pack. It's working in a nutshell. While all the models and assets are actually made in software like Maya or Blender, everything geometry-wise in the levels is put together in it. Then lighting and sweet details like decals and fog are added in. While this approach might sound simple, really nice stuff can come out from it, as you can see in the game. This is one of the many hub levels in the game, and this is a design concept that we started out with in Penumbra. The idea is to give the player some freedom on where to go, but at the same time give a clear objective. In this level, the slime obstacle is a thing that the player needs to get past, and all other levels then have things needed to do so. The slime itself is one of the few puzzles left from the initial designs, and the one I'm probably the least proud of. Now that slime appears all around, it feels a bit forced that you need to have a potion in the slime. Many testers also complained that they wanted other options in getting rid of the slime, like burning it. However, creating a potion is the central theme for this hub, so we had to let it be. I don't think it's that. editor is also a fine part of the tool bundle, and it is what we use to create particle effects for maps and events. We use particles to do nice effects like the flames in torches and the, and the smoke that comes out from them. All we have to do is add one or more particle emitter, set up some parameters like starting position and speed, on all sorts of savings in size, color or speed. It's funny how you can simulate all kinds of effects with such simple elements. I very much recommend you to try it yourself. In early concept, this was meant to be a sort of wine testing room and directly connected to the wine cellar. The reason for the whole wine testing thing was that we planned on having more laboratories in lab levels, so a lab here as well felt kind of strange. Then things changed, and only one lab was left in the design, so we changed the name to laboratory instead. The whole wine testing facility that could make dangerous acid always felt kind of strange anyways.
Doctor. Sixteenth of May, eighteen thirty nine. The unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right. But I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. Okay. To finish this little overview of our tools, I must mention the material editor, available both standalone and built into the other editor. The program itself is very simple to use. You have some material types defined by the engine, and you can throw in textures to be used for diffuse, normal maps, height maps, as well as some variables to control specific parameters for a material type. When I was writing it, I could just stare while the preview model rotated around itself and the parallax mapping effect was.
Another piece of the toolset is the model editor, used to create the entities you are interacting with while playing. Basically, we take a model and set up some parameters like physical bodies, joints, and user-defined variables. We can also attach sub-entities to them, like lights, particle systems. When an entity is finally set up, it is ready to be placed in a level using the level editor. Examples of entities here are doors, lamps, morphed furniture, critters. This level was changed a lot, and I think it's one of the most tweaked levels that we got. Not only was it part of the big archives level that we had to split up, but it was also hard to get it engaging enough. The problem here is that we don't have any sort of fun mechanic that we rely on to make the game engaging. Instead, we rely on story, atmosphere, and environment. 17th of May, 1839. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. That's weird. Sound just seems to stop. When I started writing, I had only the outline the framework for the story and the first few levels in the game design document. So I ended up finalizing a lot of material for the first levels, and then when those were done, we planned out the last two thirds or so. 
This had a funny effect since I had to not only cater to the story but to stay true to the stuff I had written for the first levels. Usually you can go back and forth while writing and change things, but if you have already recorded voices you really shouldn't because of the costs. So the first text really shaped the rest of the material in an interesting way and made them matter in a way I hadn't thought about. I really like how the this thickens the story elements as I am able to jump back into the material and keep using and reinforcing certain concepts. Agrippa is of course the most extreme effect of this method which grew from a small reference to becoming one of the most important characters in the game. Okay. 17th of May. After pounding the unforgiving stone wall for what seemed like an eternity, I realized it was hopeless. I was trapped. I fell to the ground, gasping for air, trying to focus. That's when I saw a faint blue shimmer. My weakened body was heavy to carry, but I managed to push myself toward the enchanting light. It was waiting for me. Enclosed in dark nothingness, I felt myself drawn to the mystic light. I reached out, closing it in my hands. The faint glow escaped my fingers and began to spark brightly and spirit me away, unlocking alien memories of spiraling towers, endless deserts, and impossible geometry. The next thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted. The voices of the Arabs pulling me to safety. And grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. Fragile but not breakable by hand. You have to be swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Daniel.
Um, I'm unfortunately not too interested in this game. Uh, looks honestly, it looks really good. I, I it just doesn't seem to interest me. So I guess I'll uh, catch you folks in the next Amnesia game.